It's my feel good breakfast show. I'm right now speaking to the parents out there and anyone who is looking on at a parent and a child losing their cool and judging them, I want you to listen now as well. Shopping with children is undoubtedly one of those unavoidable things and whether you shop daily, once a week, on weekdays or weekends, it doesn't matter. This morning, parenting expert, speaker and author and our good friend Nikki Bush joins us to talk about how to prevent those public tantrums and teach our kids how to behave. <laughs> In the shopping centre. Because it's a thing, <laughs> it's a thing. And it's and often you, you kind of get lulled into a, a false confidence at home and you think you're okay. And then when you've gone through one of these meltdowns in a very busy shopping center on a Saturday morning, you know all about it. This is a perennial problem, a perennial conversation. <laughs> I mean, this is a tale as old as time. It is. And shopping <laughs> is very much a part of our daily lives. And very often you can't avoid having your child with you. But it boils down to teaching kids self-regulation skills. It's a little bit like they initially have to get used to being strapped into a car seat. Kids are born to move. Yeah. They're not born to be sedentary in a trolley or, you know, in a, in a car seat. But gradually you get them used to being strapped into a car seat. In the same way, they need to learn how to behave in a shopping centre as well. But there are a few tips and tricks that you need to use along the way. And the first one I want to talk about is keeping in your child's routine if it's possible. So let's take a weekend when okay. shopping is a little bit more, uh, you can choose your time versus say a weekday when you might land up there in suicide hour, sure. which you do need to try and prevent. And yeah. we're really talking that the one to five year old here, okay, who's very impulsive, yeah. who's learning how to control themselves in the world. So if it's say a Saturday, you need to try and pick a time where, say, they've had their morning nap. Okay, when they're at their best. When they're <laughs> at their best. It's not all about you. Exactly. If you want the best out of them, make sure they're in their best time period. Reverse engineer it. Reverse engineer, exactly. I get that. Okay, so, I you know, that. if they've had their nap from 9 till 10, you go shopping after that. And you make sure that your child is fed and has had something <laughs> to drink. Because... I watch these kids having meltdowns and so often they are thirsty and they are hungry. Yeah, hungry. And even if yeah. you have given them something at home or in the car on the way, you need to have something in your handbag or in your trolley for them to eat and drink too. Because that ticks off two of the reasons why children will create, act out, act yeah. out negative attention seeking behavior. Tick those two off. Okay, important. Okay, I love that. Now. Shopping centres are quite big. You know, you think of these provincial malls, yeah, these big especially malls. Especially in South Africa, we're all about the big mall. We yeah. are. You actually need to know your mall quite well <laughs> because some of these centres are becoming quite child-friendly and family-centric. Yeah. And they have got a slide or a jungle gym somewhere yeah. or there's a, an entertainment, you know, area. Now, you need to know where these things are because these are the carrots you're going to dangle for your children. Have some change in your pocket as well. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, you're going to say to them, right, we are going to go to the supermarket and get the groceries, and after that, we're going to the tunnels for you to crawl through the tunnels. Uh -huh. So they, they know what they are holding themselves together for is the next exciting thing. And at some point, you have to take a break. If you're going to be inside a mall, which is very hyper-stimulating yeah. for kids... For you as well. Know yeah. where the parent and child um, lounge is because the big shopping centres have got these now. It's a quiet space. Indeed. You go and you park your pram, you park your trolley, take a breather. Just have a moment. You sit. And there are usually toys, yeah. books and, and quiet toys on a carpet for the kids to play with. If you're breastfeeding or giving a baby a bottle, you can quietly do that there for mums and for dads. Safe place. I love that. But take a breather where your kids can get out of the trolley, you can crawl around on the floor, where you can feed them before you get back on the road again to get to the other side of the mall. <laughs> I I'm just keep hearing divide and conquer, divide and conquer. Um, there are ways yes. that you can approach this, and it's about knowing your child and kind of knowing the environment. So I really do get that. I want to talk about preventative in our next chat. Um, what if it's just too late? Now, where does this conversation start is what I'd like you to think about. And anyone who has been in that situation, especially with like a two and a half, three year old, you'll know all about it. What is when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object kind of thing. But there are ways that you can create the conversation before 
before you get to that point. And that's what I'm dying to delve into. We are going to continue this vitally important conversation with Nikki Bush in just a bit. Stay with us. Don't pop to the shops with your little ones just yet. Wait there. It's my feel good birthday show. Welcome back. We are back with our parenting expert, speaker and author, Nikki Bush, chatting about the importance of teaching your kids how to behave in public from an early age. Nikki, this is something that I want to stress because I, I've really taken this very much feeding off the, the life path that you pointed out when my little ones arrived, but this notion of conscious parenting and how tough that gets in the moment. I find the kids are much better when it's just me or when they're just with mom. Uh -huh. when it's, and, and in that way, it, it, it's bizarre how much more they'll act out in a group scenario. Is there a reason for that? Yes. It's called seeking attention. Uh -huh. And when there are two of you, they can play the two Ooh. of you up against the other. Like masters, And yeah. some of them are aware of their ability to manipulate. And for others, it's just the attention game. For sure. And they know the minute something happens with the baby, that they can now play yeah. up. Because the baby's crying, now I must cry too. Because you know what? The baby's getting all getting the attention. All that focus, for sure. It's actually quite simple. Children are very easy to read. They want your attention. So you need to pay attention. Yeah. If they have your attention, they don't have to get it. So they don't need to have a tantrum. They don't need to ask you for another this or another that. Sure. I watch, I watch parents with toddlers, four-year-olds, just going, and I'll have that, and I'll have that, and I'll have that. There is no self-regulation. And I see parents just caving. It's not even a conversation. And I'll tell you something. So I bore my kids with my explanations. And I think rather than hear me explain another time why they're not allowed the thing, they're like, OK, no, no, it's fine, Dad. I don't want the sweet anymore. Please, just don't <laughs> explain it to me. But what you can do, <laughs> of course, is when you um, have pocket money, from about three years of yes. age, you've got pocket money, then you say, and when we get to the toy shop, that's when you're going to For spend sure. your money. And you also have to do scenario planning there because they can't buy a Barbie doll or a tractor with their pocket money sure. because there's not enough money. So you have to say, you're going to be able to buy those little things. Well, you can get your still. trading card and you yes, can get yes. this. And, and so you have to be able to scope that out, that it's not this size thing they're buying, it's those little things. It is what it is. And I would just say to all of those people looking on with judgment, who, most of you have had your kids already, so you should know this. <laughs> I, I once turned to a woman and said, well, would you like me to beat the child? I can beat her if you want. And the woman's like, oh, no, no, no. Um, so it does help if you're an onlooker not to make it more intense. Uh, I know you've been through this, so I know one can get it right. I, too, will get it right. Um, but I think just take a bit of the edge off. It's not going to be plain sailing all the time, so don't judge yourself in that process. Nick, thank you so much. Such a pleasure. I hope my karma isn't going to bring one of these on the next time I go into the shops, but I um, absolutely love these opportunities connecting with our parenting expert, speaker and author, and she has all of those things all of the time. Um, Nikki, of course, is sharing some major insights now, but you have her on tap, so please visit NikkiBush.com. She does answer back, so ask her whatever you need to.